Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to give you an introduction to adjustment layers. Now, this is considered a Photoshop 101 video, but even if you have some experience in Photoshop and adjustment layers, you may want to watch this video because you may pick up a tip or two. Now, as you can see, I have an image opened up into Photoshop. You can see it's a single background layer. Now, before I use an adjustment layer, I want to prep this image for the adjustment layer. And what I want to do is I want to get a selection of the sky. So I'm going to go up to select and down to sky. And you'll see after a second or two, Photoshop will have a selection of the sky. You could see the marching ants. Now I'm going to put that selection on its own layer by hitting Command J on my Mac. It's Control J on a PC. Now you'll notice I have two layers. I have a top layer, which is just the sky, and then Below that, I have another layer, which is everything. Now I'm ready to apply an adjustment layer. And I'm just going to take the very first one right here, brightness contrast. And you'll see by default, when I do an adjustment with an adjustment layer, it will affect all the layers below it. So I'll turn up contrast and you could see it's affecting everything. Not only the sky layer, which is directly below it, but the layer below that, which is everything. So it's affecting everything. Now, if I want it to only affect the layer directly below it, which is the sky, what I can do is I could clip it to that layer. To do that, just click on this little icon right here. When I do that, you'll notice it's only affecting the sky now because I clipped it to the layer directly below it. Now there's other things you could do as well. Let me turn that off. So I'm going to take the clipping off. So it's not clipped to the layer directly below anymore and is now again affecting everything. You'll notice when you use an adjustment layer, it comes with a mask. And what the mask will allow you to do is mask it out from where you don't want it. Now right now it's being applied everywhere. Let's say I want to remove it from the water. What I would do is click right on the mask get a brush, hit the B key on your keyboard for the brush. It's right here. The brush settings are up here at the top. You could change the size, the hardness, and, and the mode. Most often with this, you'd be painting in normal mode with opacity and flow at 100. And just get a brush that you think is the right size and paint. And you're painting directly on the mask. Because remember, we clip, clicked on that mask. So I'm removing it from the water. And you'll notice after I'm done, the mask has some black on it. That's where I painted. Wherever black is, it's being removed from that area. Wherever white is, that's where it's being applied. So now, when I go back to the adjustment layer itself and I move, let's say, contrast or brightness, it's only affecting everything other from where I painted, so the white areas of the mask. Now, let's get rid of this for a second. And let me show you something else you could do with the adjustment layer. Now, I'm going to actually get rid of this layer too. So let's get rid of the sky layer and we're right back where we began. Let me get another selection of the sky. So I'm going to again go up to select and select sky. Let it do its thing. Now we have a sky selection. Now with that selection active, instead of hitting command or control J, and duplicating it, let's directly go or go directly to the brightness contrast adjustment layer. And you'll notice when I do it with the selection active, it automatically fills out the mask. So it is only affecting the sky. So there's some little quick tips on how you could make sure that your adjustment layer is affecting exactly what you want it to affect. You could one, clip it to the layer directly below it by clicking on this little icon or two, click on the mask and use a brush to paint it out from where you don't want it. Or number three, do a selection of what you want adjusted, then open the adjustment layer. And when you do that, you'll be able then to adjust that selection area. It will automatically fill out the mask. Now, let's delete that and let's again uh, get a selection of the sky, third time. And once we do that, let's duplicate this again by hitting Command or Control J. Now you may notice if you poke around in the menu system of Photoshop that if you go up to image, you'll see there's adjustments here and you'll see there's a brightness contrast adjustment. 
Now if I click on that, you'll see it has the same sliders, but it looks different. And you'll notice when it got applied, there's no mask. This adjustment, as opposed to the adjustment layer, isn't its own layer, obviously. And as you could see, it's only affecting the sky because these adjustments under image adjustment will only affect the layer that you're clicked on. So this is kind of like a bypass. If you don't want to use the adjustment layer and you want to just affect this uh, layer here, you don't want to clip it, you could just go up there and do that instead. Now this is just an adjustment. It's not an adjustment layer. So that is just kind of wanted to let you know because you may go up into that menu system and think these are the same as adjustment layers. Although they do the same type of adjustment, they're applied differently. So let's get rid of that. Now let's, for fun, let's go through some of these different adjustment layers and see what they do. You already saw brightness contrast. And I should add that these are kind of in order of popularity, meaning these ones down here towards the bottom you probably will rarely use. Let's go to levels. Levels is where you could affect the tone of the image. Uh, right here near the top, you'll see that there's a histogram, and on the left are the shadows. In the middle are the midtones, and to the right of that are the highlights. And you can see you can move it around and affect those tones. You also could get different black points or white points down here. Also, there's a drop down, so you could do like a preset if you just want to increase the contrast. There you can see there's three different increase contrasts. You can see that that will automatically do that. It'll move the sliders accordingly uh, there. You also have some eyedroppers, and you could get white and black points uh, with them. And what you should do is just hover over these, and it will tell you what each of these do. Uh, let's just hover. It's a sample in image to set the black point. All right, so uh, what we could do is reset this down here at the bottom. Not only do we have this little clipping uh, tool down here, we also have this reset. So we could reset the thing so it's back to where it started. And then what we could do is get that eyedropper and get a black point by clicking on something that should be black, like right there. Then way down at the bottom, the bottom eyedropper, sample an image to set the white point. So we'll click on that. And we'll click on something that should be absolute white, like maybe over here, like right there. All right, and then in the middle, if you hover over that, it says sample in image to set a gray point. So this is like a midtone, and maybe we'll do something like these bricks right there, right there. So that will give you kind of an, a tone adjustment by using those eyedroppers. So that is uh, levels, the levels adjustment layer. Let's get rid of that one. Next to that is curves. And curves has a drop down at the top. So again, let's say you want to make it lighter or add some linear contrast or some medium contrast. You could do that and it'll automatically put the curve where you need it to be. Let's reset it. You also could just click on the curve and put a point on it and then move that point as you need to. It also has eyedroppers which do similar things to what the uh, other previous eyedroppers we worked with there. You also could click right on the image and affect the tone by clicking on this little tool here then go on the image and just drag up or down to adjust that point up or down. Let's reset it and finally on all the adjustment layers You'll see there's a before after kind of eyeball. So just click and hold that's before and that's after. So if you want to see those adjustments. So that is the curves adjustment layer. Next to that is exposure. And this one's kind of an odd one too. Uh, it's got an exposure slider, which does exactly what it does. But then it has these other two sliders, which are a bit odd. Offset, you can see how it does odd things to your image. It also has the eyedroppers, which do similar things that the previous eyedroppers did. So that is the exposure adjustment layer. Uh, next to that we have vibrance and there's two sliders, vibrance and saturation. Just like that. And again, each of these adjustment layers comes with a mask and all those tricks I showed you at the very beginning that you could do with selections and masks and clipping are all applicable to all these adjustment layers. So there's that. Uh, down here in the lower left is U saturation 
and this is like an HSL tab. First of all, by default, when you open it, it's going to be master. It's going to say here. That means it just will affect every single pixel equally. So you could turn saturation up. It will affect the saturation of everything. Now, maybe you want to affect only the saturation of the yellows. So then go to that drop down, put on yellow, and you can see it's only affecting the yellows. And you could do the lightness too. So let's like make it ridiculously that. So you can make them darker, brighter, whatever. So you could see you also have eyedroppers so you could pick the color. Here, let's reset this. Let's, um, first you have to use the, when you're on master, they're grayed out. And this is kind of weird, I always thought. So go to yellow. Let's say, get the eyedropper tool. And let's say even though I'm on yellow, I'm gonna add blues, right? So we'll add some, like something bluish, like up here. So you could see how this um, range here now is affecting blue. So if I go to saturation, it's going to affect blue. Now, if I want to add to that selection, get this plus dropper, and let's add some yellow to it. Now you'll see when I go to saturation, it's increasing the saturation of the blues and the yellows. So you could kind of target what you want to adjust with those eyedroppers down here. Also colorize, you could experiment with and see what it does there as well. So we'll get rid of view saturation. Now they're gonna start getting like less used. We have color balance. This is the balance between red, green, and blue, and cyan, magenta, and yellow, or RGB and CMY. What you could do, this is kind of the mix. So if you wanna add red to the image, move this to the right, and you can see it's adding red, adding red you know, to the mix. If you want to add cyan, move it to the left, and so on with each of these. And you can see the tones you adjust here. Those are the midtones. If you wanna just adjust the highlights, maybe you want to add some yellows to the highlights, you can see that. Preserve luminosity, you could click that on and off to see how that affects the image as well. And you could go to the drop down again and affect the exact tones you want to affect. So we'll get rid of the color balance. Next to that is black and white. And when you open that, it will convert your image to black and white and it will give you some mix sliders so you could affect the black and white mix. You also have a drop down, so if you want to uh, simulate as though you were shooting black and white film and you had a yellow filter on, which would enhance the sky. You can see how it enhances the sky. A red filter does the same pretty much, a little more, a little stronger than the yellow filter. Or you could do, let's say, maximum black or stuff like that. So you could come in and do the drop down, it will adjust the sliders accordingly, or you could come in and adjust the sliders yourself just to get your mix the way you want it to be. So we'll get rid of that. Again, it does have clipping, so I could have it just affect the sky. You can see how now color returned in everywhere but the sky. So we'll get rid of that. Next to that, we have photo filters, and these are just kind of filters as though you had them on the lens of your camera. So we have a warming filter, and by default, it will put density at 25%, so you could increase it or decrease it. And you could see that there's a number of different filters here, three different warming filters, three different cooling filters. Then you have actual color filters like deep emerald, <laughs> something like that. So if you want to add green to it or you want to add sepia tones to it, uh, something like that, you could do that as well. So we'll get rid of photo filter. Uh, next to that is the channel mixer. Now this one's a little confusing. First of all, you have some presets. Uh, you could do some like black and white infrared that's kind of simulating as though you had infrared film in a camera, black and red blue filter, um, black and red, red filter will enhance the sky, a yellow filter would do the same but not as strong. So you have those, you could reset it again, click right here, or you could just come in and mess up the mix yourself. First of all, the output channel is red, you can see red's at 100%, maybe you want it less or more, or you want to affect how much green is in that channel, how much blue is in that channel, let's reset it, or you could go to a different channel like blue, and you can see that's at 100, move that around as well, stuff like that. This one probably isn't used as much for the adjustments of color, but sometimes people do use the preset for, let's say, the red filter to convert it to black and white. So we'll get rid of that. That is the channel mixer. Next to that is color lookup. Now this is LUTs. 
So let's open this up. Now at the very top, 3D lot file, this is where you'd most use it. You go to the drop down, and it has some built-in LUTs. Let's say I want to do edgy amber, and it will add that LUT. Now if it's too strong, like all layers, there is an opacity adjustment right here. So you could open this up, and you could go to the slider and just lower the opacity of this layer. That's one way you could adjust it. Or you could just pick a different LUT. Fall colors, that one's not as strong, and so on. Now there are other adjustments here. If you go to abstract drop down, you can see you can do a black and white, a blue tone, great, let's just do lightness decrease, stuff like that. Then device link, if you click on there, that's uh, something you would load, a profile you would load into this, which we're not, um, I don't think I've ever done. So we'll get rid of that. So we're getting, you can see how they start to get less common or less used as you move on. Now the next one is invert. You can see how it inverted it. If you have a scan negative, this is the adjustment layer you would use to invert that scan ne negative to make it a positive. Now in this case, our image was a positive, so it's making it a negative. And again, it has a clipping tool, so I could clip it to just the uh, layer directly below it if I wanted to. And there's no adjustments there. That just inverts the image. Next to that is posterize. It does exactly what it says. It posterizes the image. And you can see the levels. Levels of posterization. Then next to that is threshold. And you can see what that does. And you can see there's a single slider here. You could affect that. As I mentioned, these get kind of less, less common. To the right of that is selective color. Now we're affecting the reds. First of all, there's presets, uh, there, there isn't presets. You could create your own preset. So you'd move the sliders where you want and then go to custom and you would create your own preset. But let's say with colors reds, you want to add cyan to the reds. There's not much red in here. Let's, let's go to a color like blues. All right, cyan to the blues, magenta the blues, yellows. Go to relative. You could click these different uh, two different ways it applies this um, adjustment layer, relative or absolute, to see what you know how it works for you. Um, let's go to yellows. You can see the grasses, how it's affecting those, and the lighthouse a little bit. So that's again another one we don't use too much. Selective color. And then the last one is a gradient map. And this allows you to add a gradient map uh, to the image. Now let's go with, like, say, blues. Open that up. We'll add some, something like this to it. You can see what it does. But again, with a, this type of adjustment layer, you would probably go to opacity and turn the opacity down so that it's just affecting the image. The way you want it. You have different methods, perceptual, linear, and classic to see what those do to the image. Gradient maps you use a little bit more, I would say, than some of the other adjustments because um, with gradient maps uh, you sometimes want to give your image a certain feel and you would do that with the gradient map. So something like that. Um, so that's that. If you don't want to use, if you add adjustment layer and you just don't like it, just grab it and drop it down into the garbage can just like that. Delete the layer mask, yes. Oh, I just grabbed the mask, grab the whole thing. There we go, then you delete that. So those are adjustment layers. Again, this is kind of Photoshop 101, an introduction to adjustment layers so you understand how to use them and what these specific adjustment layers do. Now, finally, I just want to mention that I'm in what's called the photography workspace. So if your Photoshop doesn't look like mine and you're trying to work along at home, you may want to put your workspace into this photography workspace. To do that, go up in the top right-hand corner and click right here, and you can see photography workspace. And there's, I think by default, when you first start using Photoshop, you're in what's called the essentials workspace. So you could see that it looks considerably different. Go to the photography workspace and then you'll be able to follow along at home. That's it, adjustment layers in Photoshop. Thank you everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>